Welcome to Electron Line and let's explore the Doppler shift a little bit more. In the previous video we saw that we can actually measure the velocity of a star that's approaching us or moving away from us because the, the light emanating from the star will be shifted. The wavelengths will either be longer when it's moving away from us or shorter when it's moving towards us. But that doesn't tell the whole story because stars in general doesn't either, don't either move towards us or away from us. They can move in any direction. Oh, up, down, left, right, you name it. So, in the case where the velocity is towards us, we can easily see it. In this case, the wavelength would be, um, would be uh, shorter because it's moving towards us. It bunches up the waves, so we see shorter wavelengths. So, shorter lambda. And that would be an indication that the object is moving towards us. In this case here, where the object is moving away from us, we would see a longer wavelength. And then again, the length of that, the shift of that wavelength, the depending upon how much it shifted, we can determine the velocity uh, away from us. So, longer wavelength in that case. But what happens if the star is actually moving in this direction relative to us? There's the observer and the star is moving like this. In that case, we'll not see a shift at all. We will not be able to tell if the star is moving up or down because we don't see any change in the wavelength to the left or to the right. And therefore, yes, it may be moving this way, but there's no way for us to tell. What if a star is moving in this direction? Oh, well, now we have a partial story here because really what's happening is if we take this as a vector, we can see that there's going to be a horizontal component to that vector and a perpendicular component to that vector. This component, just like this one, cannot be seen. So that part of the velocity in this direction is not known to us. We don't know how fast it's moving in that direction, but this component of the velocity that we can tell. And so there we can see how fast it's moving towards us relative to us, again, uh, depending upon what the length of this component is. So in most cases, we have some sort of vector either towards us to or away from us, and we can measure the length of that vector in a sense. We can measure the velocity of that star simply by, oh, and I'm missing an R. There we go, shorter. <laughs> there we go. Whether or not the wavelength in that direction is shorter or whether or not it's longer. Again, shorter means it's moving towards us, Longer means it's moving to, away from us. And keep in mind that if there's a radial velocity that's perpendicular to the line from the object to us, like if it's like this versus that, we're not going to be able to see it, unfortunately. But again, we can see that slowly but surely, by looking at all the various ways in which we can, do, we can observe the light, the way it shifted, the colors, the emission spectrum, the absorption spectrum, slowly but surely you can see how we can analyze a lot of information coming to us from stars, from galaxies, from nebulas and planets, just looking at the light coming to us or looking at the electromagnetic radiation coming to us. And that's the exciting part of astronomy, is to unlock the secrets of the universe by these little tricks here.